Hey, what's going on, folks? BQ here, and welcome to the debut of the B-Side, my solo Impact Wrestling wrap-up for the latest episode of Impact. With this being said, keep an eye out in the next several days for the full, in-depth Impact Wrestling review by Adam and Roe. But I'm going to run through this show real quick, slightly different format than how I normally do it. Next week, Eli Drake and Pentagon are going to main event the show. Should be interesting. Eli Drake has shown the ability to work with anybody, and they've done a really good job of keeping Pentagon from having to say too much. The kids from the Boys and Girls Club in the crowd have been great and have been a staple for the last few weeks. They've been the most engaged fans we've seen in the bleachers in quite some time. i got to say that. Kiera Hogan, the correct way to say her name. Everyone keeps calling her Kiera. Tessa Blanchard called her Kiera, and she's been the only one to do it. The fact that they keep messing up her name and pronouncing it improperly is horrible branding and is something that I hope they fix in the future. Now, Kiera is a little bit green, but cut a pretty decent promo on Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard was a star tonight from the minute she showed up on the television. Did you see those arms? She looks like she could hurt you. And she's getting in the mix fast, and I like that they're starting her working from the bottom, even though th she thinks she deserves the start from the top. Grado is back on our screen. He was backstage with Joseph Park. Says he has a girlfriend. Now, thanks to those of you who post spoilers online, I have a pretty good idea of who is it, who it is. But Aries walks in on him. I actually thought he was going to do this throughout the night. We only saw Aries one more time. I thought he was going to do this throughout the night, letting people know that the company is going to be okay. Now, I love the heel dynamic with this because it adds something very different than the whole belt collector gimmick that was prevalent the last set of tapings. Because if he was the belt collector again, it would have just felt like Austin Aries from the previous tapings. It gives this new set a new feel and direction, which is really important. KM and Falaba, they take on OVE. They promoted this match terribly online, very random, but it was promoted terribly. First, it was promoted as KM and Falaba in action, and then it was OVE in action. And I don't know if anybody put two and two together that they were going to be in action against each other. I have no idea. It was really interesting watching KM kind of work the babyface angle a little bit tonight. Now, I thought OVE throughout the match looked kind of weak. But then by the end of the match, the way that they drew the finish up and the way they got those kicks in, they actually left looking pretty strong. And at first I was upset because I was thinking to myself, these guys are part of really the biggest angle in the company or one of the biggest angles. And they're in a random tag match. But they left looking good. And I thought it was really interesting TV, the bully and the bullied teaming up. And they shake hands after the match. You know at some point KM is going to turn on them, but... It's good that we got to wait for it instead of just getting it right away like I think a lot of us expected. But I thought the ending, se ending sequence was really cool, and I am intrigued by this. I felt like a lot happened up to this point. Nothing felt like filler, and it's crazy. All we got up to this point was one match. We still got three to go. Moose is backstage, or maybe it was four, but Moose backstage with McKenzie. Good on Moose to reference the fact that he uses the NFL references a lot. Good on him. He did a promo really similar to, the, to what he did at the top of the year, which was the best promo he's ever done. Basically saying in the NFL, he never won the big one. And in Impact, he's never won, won the big one. Decent promo, but loved Jimmy Jacobs getting involved. And he's doing such a great job of finding opponents for Congo Kong. That's kind of like what a manager is supposed to do. Moose lifts Jimmy off his feet, and he kept them there. <laughs> They're building on the Congo Kong momentum wonderfully. Taya has a very amazing entrance, I must, I must say. I love when she gets introduced. My first thought when she was coming down to the ring tonight is that her, Sienna, and Tessa would make one of the most epic female heel stables in a very long time in wrestling. Now, I don't think they'll pull the trigger on something like that because in modern day wrestling, for the most part, stables are a star and a few jobbers. They very rarely, you know, put people on the same playing field. 
but they could literally do a female version of the shield with those three together. Taya and Kiera have a match. It was kind of nice to see them get a little bit of focus for a short amount of time. They've been doing a pretty good job with how they handle Kiera so far. They're building her in a manner that they failed to do with MJ Jenkins and Ava Story. Kiera reminds me a little bit of Naomi. Now, I have not seen Naomi wrestle in a couple years, but I remember back when I used to watch her that I've always felt like she was too athletic for her own good, so the moves didn't look didn't look crisp out there. Kiera reminds me of that a little bit. I wouldn't say it's reckless, it's just not it's just not crisp. The hammerlock DDT that Tessa Blanchard used when she came down, she interrupted the match. Great entrance, great music, great presentation. She's a star. She's a freaking star. That hammerlock DDT is sick. She is impressive. She has a highly engaged social media audience, and that's something that's really good. She had a motive for attacking Kiara instead of just randomly coming out and doing it. That was something I liked too. Brian Cage took on three jabronis tonight, and it looks like it's some kind of world tour thing they're doing. They call it a GWN exclusive match, but we're watching it on TV, so I don't really understand that. Perhaps we're getting this instead of the throwback. I like this better. Now, this is, you know, the whole independent uh, match thing that they did previously, but for some reason, to just this just felt really different, and I think it's because they said, hey, this is the Brian Cage world tour. He's going to dominate, and we're going to see him run through a bunch of people instead of him necessarily running through the Impact roster. So I guess now we're going to start seeing these GWN matches. I know last set of tapings, Sienna took on Kiera. Alicia had a match, but I don't think we ever saw them. So maybe we'll see them on the GWN, GWN app soon. I don't really understand how that's working. The crowd in this is 100% more engaged than the impact zone because they're providing simple reactions. When they like something, they show their appreciation. And Brian Cage sound 100 times more over. And I actually think this is a good way to handle Cage right now. DJ Z has a really great entrance, I must say. I do like his new theme song a lot better. And I'm glad that the ring announcer notified us in this six-way match that it was going to be Lucha Rules because they're not very good at throwing the rules out there for the crowd. Now, the story that they're telling here is that there's two sides. It's sportsmanship. It's one-upsmanship. And they're tied 1-1. I wonder if we're going to get something at Slammiversary, the rubber match, the blow-off match. I thought Aerostar looked a lot better than he did at Redemption. The one thing that disappointed me with this is I just didn't think the crowd was involved and engaged for some reason. That stereo springboard drop, it, drop kick that Team Impact did should have got a huge pop, but it got a very mild reaction. But lots of fireworks, and I think this match was a lot better than the first time they worked together. So it only has me wondering what is going to happen the third time. Really loved it. Team Impact got the win this time. It was a pay-per-view worthy match and they had a very similar ending again as far as holding each other's arms up because the story here is sportsmanship something a little bit different loved Eli Drake looking at the impact grand championship tonight like what the hell is that that's the second time we saw Aries come out we got a little bit of a dynamic between the two of them so we can remember that they have a history love that Eli Drake called him human trash. You knew Eli was going to get the last word in there. KM pumping up Falaba was pretty cool. He said he was basically going to help him with everything up to the women, women he dates. <laughs> that was really good. I think um, even though this was a tiny segment, what was really nice is we got some progression from something that happened earlier in the night instead of just wondering what happened when these two got backstage. I'm telling you, I'm really intrigued with this. Another hit happened backstage. He's got a target. Kill shot, maybe? I don't know. I really can only speculate at this point. DJ Z and Everett are a tag team now. We've been asking for makeshift tag teams, and they put these two together. This really gives them something to do. Z and E. I really like it. Versus LAX next week? Good lord. The four-way match tonight, they announced it early, which totally gave away the finish from the X Division title match, but Ishimori is going to take on the three Lucha Underground guys. 
from a wrestling standpoint, that should be really, really excellent. The Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan storytelling is top notch and they're doing something different with the Eddie character. Now I did this upload for the channel earlier and I never uploaded it, but I did a video about, I think it was eight or nine impact stars who creatively needed something different in 2018. And Braxton Sutter was one of them and they did something with him before uh, his release. And it's crazy because a couple of the names that I dropped on there, they are doing something with. And Eddie was one of them that I said was a must. I love that he he was arrested last episode. So in this one, he looked disheveled. He hadn't shaved in a couple of days. Tommy Dreamer's remaining in the storyline. So his inclusion at the pay-per-view wasn't as random as it appeared. Ishimori and Seidel did not have me excited at all tonight. We've already seen it. Ishimori's already been the champion. He's not going to be around long term. He's always already made it clear he wants to go to WWE. But he's over with the crowd. And it's going to take some effort to get another Noah guy over again. Marafuji, I would have him, I would bring him over sooner than later if they're trying to maintain that partnership with Noah. But it's a lot, it's going to be a lot harder than with the AAA guys to introduce him and get him over. The match was actually pretty good, and it was nice to hear a lot of reactions on the moves. We get a very similar finish of the pay-per-view, which was really cool because Roe pointed this out. It's nice to see Seidel kind of use a different finisher because the shooting our star press, the shooting star press, I'm sorry, is a baby face finisher. And you gotta you gotta kinda have something that works as a heel. And this is more of a reactionary move which I think is really cool. It's something different. Now, when Tommy Dreamer popped up back on our screen again with Eddie Edwards, he's trying to be the voice of reason. Eddie is showing a side we've never seen before, and he wants nothing to do with Tommy. What was really cool about this is that they were able to further the storyline a little bit without having to force Sammy Callahan on TV. Was interested with the Ali and Rosemary altercation backstage, where Rosemary was saying she will not allow Allie to help her. She told her, do not come to the ring. It was funny, the, that segment was obviously done during the six-man tag because you could hear him chanting for Andrew Everett. But nice little bit of storytelling before the match happened. LAX, we get a clubhouse scene that, even though these tend to get a little monotonous, this one, they're freaking out. Because LAX is getting a little stale because they've run through so many teams. We needed them to take the next step character-wise. Now they're freaking out because they don't know where Conan is. They don't know where Homicide is. And they turned a random match that we were getting, Z and E versus LEX, into an angle, into a story. Because they were saying, hey, if we lose to these jabrones, these scrubs, then who are we? What are we? So it adds a little bit of necessary storytelling instead of just doing the random match that Impact and TNA has been doing for so long. Sue Young and Rosemary... How many times have the knockouts main evented the show? And Impact doesn't even make a big deal about it because they're this, they have set this standard for so long. Another company, you'll see two women main event and they will show, oh my God, they're, the women are main eventing with girl power. Knockout's been doing this for many moons. I have to tell you folks, this angle, whatever, I don't even care that we didn't get a match. This was amazing. A uh, freaking amazing. At first I was like, why are we getting this match so quickly? Why are they blowing their load on this already? Now I see. And it's going it, to, it's, just get ready for this ride. I've got a feeling on this one, folks. Soo Young needs some wins after Redemption. But for her to just leave standing tall here and hit the panic switch on the floor and then summons the, uh, the undead brides. One of them had a phenomenal body, by the way, but summons them out there. And that's when I started realizing we weren't going to get a match, but I didn't care. And then Allie came out. Rosemary told her, go away before it's too late. I mean, it, there was drama to it. The crazies, like, take Allie. They hold her and make her watch when Su Young puts her through a table with the panic switch. Obvious, obviously, Rosemary cannot compete yet. Still nursing this injury. But wow, are they doing a tremendous job of getting her on television and hiding the fact that she's injured. Masterful. Great freaking job. Impact Wrestling. Now they put Rosemary inside the coffin. 
but I wish we would have seen what happened when the coffin closed because they still had Allie there. So I really would be interested to know how did they get Rosemary backstage because obviously those girls were holding Allie back, but they also act as the pallbearers, so to speak. This, we've got something really special here, folks. I'm, I'm, what an ending. What a freaking ending. As I said, I don't even care that we didn't get a match. This angle is going to be amazing. And they're telling a story with Tessa Blanchard and probably Kira for a little while. And then you've got something with Rosemary and Sue Young going on. Allie's going to be involved with it. But then she's also the champion. So there's just a lot of different dynamics this is going to be really interesting and uh we know the knockouts division is going to be growing here very soon so it's a good time to be a knockouts fan thanks for listening to the b-side folks we'll talk to you next time peace